Welcome to Grand Soul Saga, a one-man indie RPG created by solo developer and composer Jeremy Rainick. You play as a refugee recently landed in the turbulent city-state of DuPont and are seeking passage to the distant port of Yurden where your family awaits. However, you soon find out how much reaching Yurden will cost, and the difficult task of earning that money lies before you. Full disclosure, Jeremy sent me a copy of Grand Soul Saga for free so that I could play it and, if I chose, make a video about it. I am under no obligation to tailor my video in any way, and he will not see this before it goes live. I'll be honest, parts of Grand Soul Saga were frustrating and other parts of it needed more polish, but I've also played the game for three hours in the span of two days, so I definitely liked it. In this video, I am going to take you through my experience of playing Grand Soul Saga so that you can make the decision of whether you want to pick it up on Steam for yourself for the big ol' price of 17 Canadian dollars. The gameplay in Grand Soul Saga is interesting. When you're moving around the maps, you can hold X to run and press R2 to jump. I forgot about this at first and I thought I was stuck, but then once I got the hang of jumping, I really liked this mechanic. Stuck behind a town person? Just jump him! I even found this cool secret rooftop area to complete a side quest that I had through jumping up on different parts of the roof. I did experience one bug while jumping, at least I thought it was a bug, but maybe this was intentional, I just missed a secret. While running around a house, I was able to jump on top of the walls and run around them. And this happened because I was acting like a maniac, clicking literally everything, which you're going to want to do, by the way, because there are so many inanimate objects in this game that have items to bestow upon you. And you're going to need every single last one of them, at least in the beginning. This is because combat is incredibly unforgiving at the start of the game and healing will be really important, but we'll get to that in a second. Overall, I enjoyed exploring in Grand Soul Saga. There's plenty to do in each town area and lots of NPCs to talk to. Dialogue varies from simple to pretty in depth. Some of it is cheesy, some of it is simple, some of it was hilarious, and other parts were deep and serious. I should mention that this game is very dark and grimy. The people of DuPont are oppressed by their government and by criminal gangs. Many are poor or addicts or, or both, and this is reflected in the storytelling of the quests that you take on. Like I said, the combat in Grand Soul Saga will kick your ass. At the start of the game, enemies will take one turn for every turn that you take, but they hit really hard and you can die pretty quickly. This is why you need to pick up everything you can find, because once you do, you'll have access to more powerful healing items than you can buy at the start. Still, it can be really hard when you just have one or two characters and you're fighting four bad guys. There are no random encounters, so you won't get, get into a fight unless an enemy spots you or you run into an encounter through dialogue or some sort of a quest, but it also means that it's not super clear on how to level up. I tried a few different quests thinking each time, okay, this might be the one with easier enemies, but nope, they were always hard. Eventually, I solved this problem by recruiting four party members and then all of a sudden things were a little bit more fair. I went back to a battle that I was having trouble with and it was a really fun challenge. This is because combat in Grand Soul Sega has a lot going for it or a lot jammed into it depending on your perspective. It plays like your classic RPG with an ATB gauge filling up for each character but it's not active so you will be able to take your time on your turn and you won't get thumped. When your turn comes up you'll have a lot of choices so let's talk about them. When you use a normal attack there is a swinging meter to time your attack to do more damage. To be honest, this system felt extra, I don't think it's actually necessary unless it's expanded more further in the game and I just haven't seen that yet. There's also a boost system similar to Octopath Traveler where you consume boost orbs to power up attacks or your healing. There's also a stun system where if you hit a certain amount of times with an attack type similar to Octopath, you can stun the enemy. But this system was frustrating to me because regular attacks don't trigger it and you have to use SP attacks, so that was kind of difficult at times. I also noticed not all enemies even had a weakness to be stunned anyway. There are also some enemies early on that have a stun type where you only have one character that can stun that. You don't have a lot of access to SP, so it's actually pretty difficult to pull off without a character actually dying before you can do it. Your characters can also be stunned in the same manner, but I never saw that happen in the three plus hours that I played. You might notice in the footage that characters have AP and SP. 
AP lets you use alchemy based skills, basically magic, and some characters might have alchemy that heals, damages, or buffs themselves or others. SP also lets you use a range of skills, and my main character had attacks and self buffs that cost SP, while another character, Elsie, had attacks and also heals. Hashem, the third character that I recruited, had different attacks that costed SP as well as debuffs. The final character that I recruited was Dumond. He is a priest and he has a ton of alchemy skills that use AP, but no SP skills except for a skill that converts 80 SP to AP. So this basically means that his alchemy skills will cost mostly AP, but also a little bit of SP. So you had to find that fun balance of maintaining the levels necessary to use his powerful alchemy. And when you ended up building up a lot of SP, which you do in this game, you could convert it back over to AP without using something like an ether. All of the items in the game recover or reduce the HP, AP, and SP values of your party. So some items might have really poor healing output, but they would give you some AP and SP. All the alcohol in the game reduces your HP, but gives you an equal amount of AP back. There's also a drug called Ink that you find all over the slums early on, and that gives you a massive HP heal and SP boost, but at the cost of removing a lot of your AP. This wasn't a big deal at the start of the game because I didn't have a lot of SP skills, but now I can see where that might be risky. SP is actually generated throughout the battle, unlike AP, and you can set up a mode for each character that determines how they build up their SP. So my main character attacks a lot, so I gave him the Bruiser setting so that he gains 12 AP every time he attacks. Dumond, on the other hand, doesn't regular attack at all, so I gave him the style which gives him 8 AP whenever an ally is attacked. This mechanic is kind of cool. There might be fights where you need to switch up your modes to try to build up your AP depending on what that character is going to be doing in that battle. By the end of the time playing the game, I had a rough strategy worked out for encounters. My main character, Miss Idia, and Hashem were all about dealing damage. Elsie used her SP healing skill every turn if possible, so I had to change her SP mode to gain when other people took damage because she wasn't attacking. And that was kind of a shame because she's actually one of the bigger damage dealers, but being able to use SP to heal when you were out of enemy or items and save those items for when you really need them was super important. And then I had Dumond who was kind of on a mix of attacking with alchemy or being a secondary healer if necessary. I found this to be really fun and I'm interested to see how much more combat can grow uh, in depth as I play further into the game. And the game also recruited or referred to recruiting more party members. So I'm excited to see who else I get and what kind of abilities they may be able to use. Let's rattle through a few miscellaneous parts of the game and discuss some thoughts that I had starting with the music. So the music in Grand Soul Saga is overall great. Jeremy's done a really good job here. I really enjoyed the battle theme and the boss themes. I could listen to either of them for as much time as I need to. The slums had this really chilling piano theme that really set the tone for the area, but then all of the ambient people and traffic noises pulled me back out of it. There's also a nice theme that played as you snuck around this mansion, and I thought that was really well done. Some of the other areas didn't have any music, but instead they just had sound effects or ambient sounds. So the apartment complex area just had traffic noises, which didn't really feel fitting because you don't see any traffic. And when you go to another part of the town later on, you actually do go to an overpass and you can see cars and stuff, but there was nothing like that there. The mines had this ambient mining noise rather than the track, and the docks had ocean sounds. Some of the sound effects were really jarring. Mostly the jumping effect was too much like a platformer sound and also there was this like person is annoyed uh, effect when like there you hear it a lot of the beginning with Elsie uh, and it just felt like I was playing RPG Maker the very first one on my on my PlayStation and I hope some of those sound effects can be improved upon because I as I understand it there are still like small updates being made to this game uh, but those were kind of taking me out of it and those are the types of things where when you're playing early on in the game, uh, you know, can be kind of make or break where you feel like, oh, I mean, this game doesn't feel as polished as it should. And then, and then you start to disconnect from it. So talking about locations, this is where the game shows, in my opinion, that it's made by a solo developer. There are so many different areas to go to and lots to do at each area, but I didn't always feel immersed in these areas. The apartment complex area was one example of that. The day night cycle is an awesome addition to the game, but also feels really fast at times. The world map also feels a bit weird with these big roads, but I also wouldn't lose it because it gives you that scale of how big the city is and kind of like the scope of where you can go and, and where you can start exploring. The battle scenes are all the same kind of like space background with a grid, which looks really cool, but I also really enjoy pixel backgrounds. It's one of my favorite things about classic RPGs and I really missed that there. 
We can also talk about the sprites. This was a huge plus for me. The sprites look awesome. They're inspired by Final Fantasy VI. They look good in combat. They look good outside of combat. And the enemy sprites were also classic RPG sprites, and I really enjoyed looking at them. I can also briefly mention the dialogue in this game is fine. Some NPCs are going to give you deeper dialogue options with many choices. At one point, I actually talked down a suicidal man and convinced him to live another day. And later on, I saw him living, uh, sorry, we're living, working in the mines, which is kind of cool. There's also some really like weird, ominous like secrets in the game that were really creepy and alluded to like maybe some endgame stuff or like challenge stuff that you can do later. So for example, there was just this naked mine, man in the mines and he was like hitting with a pickaxe uh, and you're like, okay, that's just kind of, kind of weird. But then the game describes that he's like doing it with this intense focus and this heartbeat starts uh, effect starts playing in the game and you're like okay this guy's dangerous this is like demonic in a way uh, so you kind of start backing off you also get a key in the mines and you can go unlock this hidden passageway and there's a a, a statue there and when you go click on the statue it kind of gives you a warning not to do it and if I did it it's like an end game level boss that is just like super challenging and really epic you also get to break into the Duke's mansion pretty early on uh, to try to steal this statue to sell for money. And if you go up to the roof, it gives you a warning that you might not be ready for it. And once you get up there, the Duke is up there with these two really creepy robotic guards. And you talk to him and he kind of like talks about the ominous like end of the world and things changing and kind of calls you vermin. But then doesn't do anything to you. Like he just lets you run away free. You've broken into his manor and he's just like, you're no concern of mine and the whole thing was just really creepy and and kind of like i'm just trying to figure out what's going on now there's there's definitely some intriguing things very ominous things that have been happening the final thing i should talk about with grand soul saga is the difficulty because there were parts of it that felt unnecessarily difficult so at the beginning you can only buy weapons and nobody is in the armor shop so i completed a quest that uh where i had this option to save a prisoner but i could have left the prisoner there well, it turns out that prisoner that I chose to save because I'm a good guy was the wife of the armor shop vendor. So after I return her to the uh, slums, he opens up his shop and had I not chosen to save her, would I not have access to the armor shop? Maybe you it's one of those things where when you say no, then you just save them anyway. But I, the game is set up to make let you make decisions. So I don't really know how that would have worked. Maybe I could have got armor somewhere else later on, but it was kind of weird. I wanted to buy armor. I had the money for it. Uh, there's also a building that's marked like an inn and uh, it the person in there specifies that workers come there to rest and then they say well you could go work at the mines they, they need help with something right now so I go to the mines and I help out with this quest which is kind of cool because at first you go to this this uh, there's these terrorists or like revolutionaries at the back of the mines and you can fight them uh, but I actually dodged all of them I avoided all the encounters and I got to the boss and I'm like okay well this boss is gonna kick my butt but I actually had the option to talk it out. And by the end, I talked them out of the mines. I set up a quest for later on and I completed the quest for the other guy because all of these uh, revolutionaries left the mines. So I complete the quest. I go back to the inn with the big inn sign or little sleep sign and nobody there lets me sleep. I don't know how to sleep. I don't know <laughs> if that's an option, if it can happen in this game. Uh, I still don't know, but I have a dead party member in my party right now if I loaded up my save file and I would have to heal him. I'd have to revive him with an item and then heal him with items. Uh, and maybe this is something that I've missed. And if I missed it, I apologize, but also maybe it should be a little bit more clear uh, how that would actually work. Grand Soul Saga is an interesting RPG from solo developer Jeremy Rainick. I can imagine how much work he put into the game and I think that it paid off. When I first started playing the game, I didn't really feel like it was a game that I could stick with. I persevered through the difficult battles and I ended up having a lot of fun. And as I explored the world and I did these different quests, they started to connect together and all of a sudden things started to take shape. So while at first the game seemed a little bit unpolished, it seemed overly difficult and maybe a little bit random, when things started to come together, I really felt that there was a good game on my hands here. 
I think this is definitely a game that I'm going to come back and play on, uh, play more of. Um, when I do that, I'll make an updated video when I get further in and kind of share more information about the game. And I think the price is pretty fair considering that you're getting a lot of RPG and only one person made it, right? The other thing is that this game is meant to be difficult. That is an intention uh, that's not like random or unbalancing. It's, it's just th that's the way that he made it. So take that as as you may people really enjoy that type of thing uh, but I, I do think that maybe there's some things that could be a little bit tweaked at the beginning just to keep people in the game uh, to get them further on because I was motivated to not give up and just keep on playing be under no illusion though this game is not going to have as much polish as a game like sea of stars for example but i think that it makes up for that by having a lot more ambition in terms of its massive story multiple outcomes and just the scope of being able to go in any direction you want and do do the different things that you want to do so that's going to be it for this preview and i hope very much that you enjoyed it let me know if you're thinking of trying grand soul saga and if you do let me know what you think about it Otherwise, I'll be back soon enough with more videos. I am going on a little brief holiday this week for the first half of the week, but I'll be back on Friday and I'll be able to uh, make more videos then. Uh, so I'll see you all soon in another video. And thanks for watching this one.